the stick for self-defense using the long martial arts staff. This is also known as a bow or a jangbong in Korean. The Chinese have a couple different names for them, bong and gun. It's in silimbom, you find it in Indian martial arts. It's just a long piece of wood. It can be metal, it can be anything that you pick up that's in your environment that you can use to keep the distance between you and the threat. It's so one of my favorite things about using the long martial arts staff is that it gives you reach advantage. And when we talk about somebody who might have a bladed weapon, a knife, a hatchet, a machete, if you have a long six foot pole, you can really do a lot of damage and you can create that distance and keep them back. And it hits really hard. But we're gonna talk about how to use this as we warm up. You're gonna start with your hand in the middle of your staff. You're turning from side to side. It's very important when you do training for self-defense, how to hit somebody with a long martial arts staff. You've gotta properly warm up your joints, especially using a self-defense staff like this. This is made out of hickory. It's in the first link below if you wanna see the dimensions. It's very heavy. And the benefit of having a heavy staff is that when you strike, it's not going to, it's gonna do a lot of damage. It's not gonna break very easily. Also, when you strike this way or shoving, coming back here, coming up under the legs, or between somebody's legs up under the chin, you create a lot of damage from a long distance away, which is my reason, the reason I like it so much. But you've got to properly warm up. So we do the twist here for about 30 seconds, put it into the other hand and just turn it. You're also going to feel this start to stretch out those tendons in the muscles. Hello, Doug. It's good to see you. So do this for 30 seconds, stomach up and in, abs tight, breathe in through the nose. And then you're gonna to start to go from one hand out to the other hand. And the purpose of all this spinning is not for self-defense. That means you're not gonna to start to spin in self-defense and do all of these fancy moves and go behind your back and then whip it up over your head. You're not doing that for self-defense. You do that, all this training, all this spinning that we do is to warm up, to build power, to build flexibility to build um, spacing, spatial awareness, timing and distance, get a good feel for how the space or the staff moves through space and time. When you're ready to defend yourself, you're gonna take a good position, a good stance here, and then you're gonna start with a simple thrust, making sure your hands are in this split position. You can also thrust in this push-up position. This also works, I prefer this for strength. So this first move, I want you to stand behind your staff and we're gonna continue to do a little warm up, a little strike, some warm up strikes. Hello, Doug, it's good to see you. But both Dougs are here. Jason, it's nice to see you. You're standing behind your staff, you point your thumb at the threat and you thrust. From here, it looks like this and like this. Notice that your arm is gonna be fully extended in the front, the back hand is gonna turn up and go in. That's gonna lock this in place so that when you run into the body for self-defense, it might push your body back behind your staff, but you're not going to lose your staff and he's gonna close that distance and hit you with that knife or whatever else he has. The, uh, the mirror sphere zone says it's birthday today. Happy birthday, I'm so glad you're here. So you're standing here behind your weapon, point the thumb and thrust. That's your first self-defense move. You're standing here behind it, it's very important, get behind it and then thrust from here thrust. To increase power, I want you to exhale with the thrust. As you go forward, start to go faster and faster. But remember, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. It means take your time at the beginning. Teach yourself how to move, how you're supposed to use this for self defense Hello, Patrick. It's good to see you. And then you'll naturally speed up. Your power will increase as your speed increases. A fast strike is a hard, powerful strike. But stand here, practice getting it into that back hand. You do that by simply pointing that thumb right at the threat, pop it up and thrust. Exhale, gives you more power. Stepping in with the strike. In, as you come into the target, stepping in, you put your whole body weight into that thrust. That's gonna stop him, that's gonna push him back. And again, you have this great reach advantage I wanted to pick up my trainer. Trainer's a fancy word for a not sharp knife, right? But this, this is a metal knife, it's a real knife. It's not a, a toy, it's not a practice knife or a, a fake knife, it's a trainer. But you can see, if this were a, a sharp bladed weapon, this is what he has, and I only have this six foot pole, I win. I have reach advantage, and I'm not gonna let him close the distance. I don't want you to do that either. 
All right, Black Assassin says he does American Kimpo. Great style. So from here, basic thrust. The second thing I want you to do is pull your hand into your shoulder. Always keep the staff between you and the threat. That means don't pull it out here to hit. This is how most people will do it when they're untrained. You strike from here. I want you to strike from here, from your shoulder, almost like you're doing a jabbing strike. From here and pull the bottom hand in as you turn through your shoulders and hips. And you can hear this hard piece of hickory is smashing everything. Hello, uh, Shabbat. It's good to see you from here. Strike, thrust, strike, thrust. Put your two strikes in combination together. And then the third punch is gonna come with the back hand. Just like a crossing punch across the body, that's gonna put the backside in across the side of his head into the temple, the neck, the jaw, into that upper arm, maybe into the arm itself, into a joint which breaks easier than the bone does. From here, thrusting, striking, punching with that back hand, and you're gonna learn how to adjust where your hands are on your staff from having this kind of distance and striking here, sliding it so that this long, you can keep all of these thrusts, all of these strikes, far away from your opponent, keep them off of you. And you just keep striking, keep striking until the fight's over. Fight's not over until you win. That's what self-defense is all about. So stand behind it, point the thumb, thrust, pushing with the front hand, pushing with the back hand. And then the third or fourth strike is a reverse hand thrust, just coming in like this. Always straight in, going in through the soft tissue of his body for self-defense, standing here, you learn how to hit somebody with a stick for self-defense using the long martial arts staff, I want you to keep it simple. One, two, three, four. Bring it down over top. That's number five, just straight on the top of his head. So from here, standing behind it, thrust, front hand, back hand, uh, thrusting reverse, and then down over the top. You can also add insult to injury with one more strike coming up between the legs, maybe up under the chin. So you're standing behind it, thrust, punch, backhand, backhand or reverse thrust, down over top of his head, and then up under the bottom of his body. Notice that my hands, or your hands, are sliding. Sand dude, long time no see, it's good to see you. But I want you to practice that with your hands. Also, go back to spinning. Spinning builds power, builds speed, builds coordination, balance, all the things that you need to defend yourself. You don't use it for self-defense, but you use it in self-defense. It's like a boxer jumping rope. You wanna get better as a fighter, you're gonna skip rope. Skipping rope is gonna condition the legs, the heart, the lungs. It's gonna improve your timing and distance. It's gonna improve your balance, your coordination. It's going to condition you for the fight, but you're not gonna box with a jump rope. Spinning the bow, spinning your staff is the same thing. You learn how to hit somebody with a, a stick for self-defense using the long martial arts staff or bow. You spin, going hand to hand. After this, go into a figure eight motion. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, take your time. The purpose of this spinning is not to intimidate. It's not to create uh, some kind of Darth Maul cone of protection, right? This isn't a shield. It's not a shield. You don't, you're not using a, a double-bladed lightsaber. This spinning in practice forces your stomach up and in. It strengthens your shoulders, strengthens the forearm and the grip. This will lean you out faster because it's going to bring your heart rate up and you're going to break a sweat, especially when you use one of these self-defense staff. Good afternoon, Garen. It's nice to see you. Again, if you want to see what the dimensions are, maybe you want to make your own Look at the first link below. Copy it, make your own. If you don't wanna spend the time, spend the money. You can buy one from the link and it'll last you a lifetime. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, take your time. Notice that you're turning your shoulders and hips and then go from one hand into the other hand. This is, this, this is that warm up move when you're going side to side, but now you're going forward and then this to the side, bringing it up. Bring your pinkies together from one side to the other side, stomach up and in, abs tight, turn your shoulders, turn your hips, spin, 
as part of your practice, spin to get fighting fit, and then stick your staff on the ground, stand behind it, point it, and thrust. Now, this is very important to say, or maybe it's not, but I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> and also, please, if, if you like this kind of content, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, because that will allow me to come into your feed and you'll see more of this kind of stuff. So, uh, hello, Peter. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you for a while. Peter's in Germany. You might not carry your staff with you everywhere you go. <laughs> in fact, there are many places that you won't be able to carry your staff or it won't be appropriate or you'll just feel silly where, uh, carrying it. However, you might go for a hike. You might walk around your neighborhood. There are many places where you might feel comfortable with it. You might go to the park and spin with it. And then the obvious question is, well, if I don't have my staff with me all the time, how am I going to defend myself? How am I going to hit somebody with a stick for self-defense using the long martial arts staff or bow? I saw it today. I was with the kids at the park. It's a state park. It's a beach. Um, one side's the beach. The other side's the intercoastal beautiful and they're lifeguards and they're beach goers and they're lots of tourists and it happens every time we go i saw it again today the lifeguard was cleaning up the leftover umbrellas my daughter said to me dad go get that umbrella and make a video on how to defend yourself with the bow which is why we're talking about it today because she put it in my head and i thought yeah that's right we should talk about that and so i didn't make the video but i wanted to tell you that when i picked up that uh, cheap throwaway umbrella that the, the, all the tourists down here buy them. They just leave them on the beach because they can't take them on the plane home. It's about this long, so it's not as long as this. However, it is a lot longer than a knife. It's a lot longer than a machete or uh, someone's fist. And I can stand behind it and I can thrust and I can push and I can punch and I can reverse thrust, bring it down over the top and up under somebody's legs for self-defense. So the point is, you might not carry this with you everywhere you go. However, there are sticks in our environment that act the same way a long martial arts staff does or a, um, a bow, a bow staff. A, you know, bow staff this is redundant. Bow means staff, so saying bow staff is saying the same thing twice. However, the point is, learn how to fight with a stick, and then you can pick up any stick, any size, and use it in self-defense. And will this stop one of these? No, it won't. If someone has one of these, pulls it out, and you can get to them fast enough, do it. If you've got nothing else, do it, right? Is this the best option in the world for self-defense? I don't know. Whatever you have that is a force multiplier. So put in your hands, this allows you to hit a lot harder. This allows you to stand back a lot farther. Striking, all these different strikes, can be done just by sliding your hand from side to side, which by the way, is the other reason I want you to spin so much. Let's talk about another spin where you're going over the top. This is your right hand. This is your left hand on the bottom. Your left hand turns up and makes half of a butterfly. That's the butterfly wing. There's this little antenna. And then the other hand becomes the other side. There's your butterfly spin. So he's coming over and you pull this in and out of the way Drop it in the hand, pull this one out of the way. Let me see if I can turn to the side so you can see that. You're just sliding it in your hand. See how your wrists are in contact? You're touching the hands together, the wrists. Turning it over. You can reverse it, go in the other direction. Keep looking out the door because someone's supposed to come in in a minute and I'm gonna show them how to defend himself with the long martial arts stick, like we're doing right here. Stand behind it, thrust, front hand, back hand, reverse thrust, over the top, up under the, between the legs or up under the chin, and then pull it into your chest like you're gonna push up and punch from here, right through his face, his jaw, his throat, his chest for self-defense. This long piece of oak, this big bar, with both of your hands, arms behind it, and your whole body stepping into that strike will knock somebody very far away from you. That's a close strike. You talk about close quarter combat, you gotta get close, here we are, and then you can move back out and you're this far away. Six feet is pretty far from somebody with a knife. That's a good distance. You can say, well, he might close the distance. Yes, make sure you're hitting him the whole way as he comes in, and hard and fast, and as many times as you can. It's not one and done, it's multiple, it's close with and destroy violence of action for self-defense. 
when you learn how to hit somebody with a stick for self-defense using the long martial arts staff or bow, you want to use the natural advantage of distance, the natural advantage of leverage, right? You can also do a pull cue style strike where you create even more speed and power as you're stepping. This is very easy on you, it's hard on him. All of your energy is concentrated right there at the tip of that lever as you're stepping in and sliding. You can also step to the side. I like when you practice getting this position and then stepping off at the angle and then strike him on the way by. From here, you're behind your staff, thrust, strike. Behind your staff, thrust, strike, strike. There's that reverse thrust over the top, up under the bottom of the chin, and then like you're doing a push-up, straight in. Tina, it's nice to see you. Uh, Tina, I miss what you'd be afraid of. If you want to throw that back in there, I'll see if I can be helpful or somebody else can answer your, your, your uh, concern in the, the um, comment section or also in the chat. A lot of you guys, that's why I love this, uh, this format, our virtual dojo. We all share, we learn from each other. You guys know as much or more than I do. Some of you know a lot more. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. I'm being serious and I'm being facetious at the same time. If they took for the stick from you, excellent question. My favorite question. I'm going to make the video this week as soon as I can, maybe even tonight, because I know I'll have some, I'll have a couple of students here and I know one of them will agree to do it with me. What happens? How do you retain your stick weapon? Um, whether it's the walking stick or the Joe medium sized staff or the walking cane or the bow. Everybody has the same concern. It's a valid concern. It's very, very smart. Hello, Jeffrey. It's good to see you. Uh, Jeffrey says, we all begin at the beginning. And isn't that the truth? We're all beginners. Never lose your beginner's mind. Maintain that, that always able to learn something new, always to admit when you're wrong, always to push your ego to the side. But uh, the answer is this backhand. If you're here and he grabs your staff and he starts pulling on it, it's your arms against his arms. And if he's bigger, younger, stronger, or there's more, more than one of them, you're in big trouble. You're going to lose the stick and he's going to beat you with it. That's, that's a valid, smart, good concern. However, this is so super simple and requires practice. Super simple and practice it. Instead of letting him wrestle the stick away from you, you're going to take your back hand and you're going to plant it. It becomes an anchor. You're going to plant it to your, against your body and your body now becomes the anchor. So now he might have big arms. He might be able to pull harder than you can, but he's not able to pull your whole body. Maybe you'll move a little bit, but your body, remember this always, my arm, because I'm just big person, my arm often is bigger than a lot of people's arm when I train with them. It's just a fact, right? That doesn't mean I'm a better fighter. That doesn't mean I hit harder. It's just bigger. And so the immediate question for somebody who's not trained is, well, your arms are bigger than mine. How am I going to beat you? Because, you know, I can't beat your strength. Plus, I do a lot of stuff with grip strength. I do have a strong grip. The answer is your body, your body is bigger than my arm. No matter who you are. When I work with the little kids, their body is bigger than my arm. So if you take and you lock this onto your hip and this becomes an anchor, now when he's pulling, he's not pulling against your arms. He's pulling against your body. The next thing that you have to do is make a circle. You can make a circle this way or you can make a circle this way. The circle is made with your front hand. You're circling this way or you're circling this way. When you get a training partner, have your partner go to the other side and hold your staff or your walking stick or your cane. Take your other hand, put a planet there, the back hand, get in a good position, your feet just under your body, and make this turn. At first with your hand, later you're gonna learn how to do it by turning your hips away and back in, away and in. Go one way, and go the other way. What's gonna to happen to his hands is they're going to go like this. And then once you get it in this position, step. Don't push, because you've got to keep it anchored. But from here, move forward. See how by stepping forward, I move the staff forward. So he takes the hold of your staff, you make that, plant it here, you make that circle, and then your body moves forward, he's going straight back. If you add one more move, 
which is taking that front hand and pushing down. And you don't have to go to the ground because from here down, it's just gonna be a little bit, two to three inches is gonna sh shove him on the ground. So from here, hip number one, lock it into your hip. This becomes the anchor and it takes the work away from your arms so that you don't lose it and it gives it all to the body. Your body is stronger than his arm. Remember that, your body is always gonna be stronger than his arm because your core muscles are so big. However much you weigh, he's gonna have to be wrestling that. Number two, make that circle and practice this. Remember I said it's simple and you need to practice it. So turn your hands first. Just this hand is making the turn. This hand is just pivoting, right? This is just becomes the pivot point right here. So you're turning and then you're going to step. Turn as you step. Final motion, turn, step, and push straight down. Turn, step, push straight down. When you get a partner, have them grab your staff and see how powerful that is because you're gonna be able to smash somebody and put them on the ground when they take hold of your staff. And if you do that immediately, it's gonna be even more effective. The more immediate you are in your response, the more, thank you, Tina. The, Tina, this works, I promise you. I wish you were here, we could do it in person and everybody else could see. Doesn't matter how big the other person is, but like I said, I'm gonna make that video either tonight or sometime this week. It's, I, I've been waking up in the middle of the night thinking about it because it's such a common question. Everybody wants to know. And the biggest challenge with this channel, with us in this virtual dojo, is it's often just me talking at you. And I wish you were here with me so we could do it together. But the, I think the solution is bring somebody in so they can see, you can see what it looks like when someone else is here. So from here, you put it on your hip, you make the circle, you move at the same time, and the final motion is down, down. Don't go all the way to the ground, you don't need to. From here, just down a little bit. And it was Wally J. Wally J was this great stuntman, martial artist here in the United States, and he might still be alive, I don't know. If he is, he's a million years old. Uh, it's called small circle jujitsu. This basic concept comes from this concept of small circle jujitsu with, with one finger. <laughs> and I, I used to go to his, when I was a kid, a young man, and especially when I was a young Marine stationed in California, I would go to his seminars and he would teach this principle of small circle jujitsu, which is super, super powerful, very effective in self-defense. But it's just, if, if anything, just remember that. Anytime your hands are away from your body, you're wrestling your arms against his arms, you lock it, now all of a sudden, He's not ripping this out of your hand the way it seems like he would. And he would. If you leave it out here, you're going to work. You're going to get fatigued. He's going to eventually jerk that away. He's going to beat you with it. And we don't want that to happen. So lock that in as soon as you can. All right. So I think we did, we did this. It was the last spin. I want you to do one more spin. And this is only so that you can get super strong and super fast in handling your staff. And strong hands, stronger grip. That's also gonna help when it comes to someone trying to take it from you. And this is a wrist roll. And this is just so that you can get better at weapon retention. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. It's never more important than it is here. What happens is when you start to do this, when you get all nervous that you're gonna drop it, and you will drop it, just pick it up. Every time you drop it, pick it up. But you roll it over the back of the hand. And one more time, I'm gonna say this one more time. This is especially for Anybody who's ever had a traditional Kabuto class, or you did the Okinawan, uh, you had the o Okinawan style instructor who told you, never spin your staff. Spinning your staff is for fill in the blank. If, that, if that's you, remember, the only reason I want you to spin your staff is because it's gonna improve your, it's conditioning for the body, the same way a boxer jumps rope. It's gonna build strength in your forearm and some people say, no, it's not true. It doesn't build strength in your form. Yes, it does. <laughs> I have very strong grip, very strong hands, very strong shoulders. And it's all, it's all this one staff. It's this length. This is what started it all for me. When I was a young kid, I used to uh, work with my dad. Since I was four years old, I would go and I'd paint these apartments. He'd get these big apartment complex jobs all summer. And one of the things that I had to do was sand down the wall with a sanding pole. Then you unscrew the sanding pole, the sanding attachment, and you screw in the 18 inch roller attachment. And then I would be painting walls all summer. And when I got bored and we were between jobs, I started spinning 
and playing around because I also did martial arts. I did two things as a kid growing up. I worked and I did martial arts. And so from here, learning how to move through space and time, the benefit is that you hit yourself a lot and you learn where your staff is, but you never use the staff. You're not gonna spin the staff for self-defense. The spinning is purely supplemental to standing your ground, getting a better position, thrust, strike, right? And good, tight strikes, staying behind your weapon for self-defense, staying behind the long martial arts stick, right? And the whole purpose of using a long martial arts stick or a long martial arts staff or the bow is to learn how to hit somebody with a stick for self-defense. And, and that's the other half of it. I, I don't want you to spin if you're never gonna learn how to use it for self-defense. Some people only wanna spin, which is fine. Except, I also want you to learn how to hit somebody with it for self-defense, because self-defense is so important to me, especially now. You guys have been awesome. I will see you on the next one. Remember, we're gonna talk about weapon retention. How do you keep it? And for those of you who say, all you need is one of these, you better be trained in weapon retention. You better know how to, how to use it too, and when to 